Success is divinely natural. There is nothing on earth or anywhere else more unnatural than failure. It's not natural to fail. That's unnatural. The beautiful old spiritual is titled, There is no failure in God. Let's say it together. There is no failure. The Lord God in the Old Testament, in the book of Genesis, about the only thing he ever regretted was making man. <laughs> but divine principle never fails. Just think of the millions of years that the sun has come up in the morning and gone down in the evening. The seasons have changed. The tide has come in and gone out. You know, there must be an unfaltering principle behind all of that. You can see that even in natural phenomena. Is that right? As the Christian saints would put it, Jesus never fails. And divine principle in this, in this sense is what is truly meant by Jesus never fails. There are certain eternal cosmic laws which operate the same time all the time. And one of those great cosmic laws which operate the same time all the time without failing is this, as a man thinks, so is he. That never fails, and as Reverend Ike taught us in a previous lesson, you're always getting perfect results, whether it's perfect joy or a perfect mess. <laughs> but every one of you here tonight, you may not know it, but every one of you here practicing perfection. <laughs> the perfect, the perfection of divine principle is operating in your life every moment. You are getting exactly what you think of yourself. If you want something else, then think something else about yourself. As I say, even if your life is a perfect mess, you're still getting perfect results. <laughs> What you see is what you get. And one of the greatest things that I've ever heard Reverend Ike say, I think it was said the last lesson, or a lesson before that, which again illustrates the immutability of divine principle. See yourself as you wish to be, for you must be as you see yourself. Now that's based on unchangeable divine principle. And some of you are probably shocked to know that you're getting perfect results in your life. Yes, you are. You're getting perfect results. If all you get is 50 cents a month, that's perfect results because that's all you're thinking. <laughs> Divine principle reacts to Rockefeller just like it does to you. Divine principle, the law of mind is the same thing that makes the rich rich and makes the poor poor. You see, they're not two things. The Lord our God is one and the same thing that makes you poor is the same thing that will make you what rich and it's just as simple for the law of mind to make you poor as it is to make you rich it is just as simple for the law of mind to make you a failure as it is to make you successful it doesn't cost God anything for you to be to be rich uh oh I want to give you that, and I want you to write this down. It doesn't cost God anything extra for me to be rich. Come on. It doesn't cost God anything extra for me to be rich. That's why you don't have to have any guilt complex about eating steak while others are starving. Because if you didn't eat that steak, the poor, the, the folks, the people who don't have the consciousness for steak couldn't eat it anyway. <laughs> It was just like the young man who walked up to me as I was sitting in one of the church's limousines, Rolls Royce limousines, several years ago, about three summers ago. He said to me, pardon me, are you Reverend Ike? I said, yes. He said, Reverend, do you think it's right for you to be riding in a car like this? Yeah, this car cost about $30,000. I said, well, you, you're off a few. <laughs> he said, but do you think it's right for you to be riding in a car like this? I said, what do you mean, son? He said, well, you're supposed to be helping the poor, aren't you? So I said to him, would it help the poor if I got out of this and got on a bicycle?
It wouldn't help the hungry for you to be hungry, would it? <laughs> See how, you, you know, when you don't know the law of mind, you're just downright silly. It doesn't take anything. The, the rich people don't take anything from the poor folks. The poor folks take from themselves. You can only have what you have the consciousness to have. And I'll have to tell you this again, and I tell you this time and time again to illustrate what I mean because we always have new people here. Always you're reading in the newspaper about people who died in the most poverty-ridden conditions, in an old shack full of junk and paper and garbage. And some of these people had begged on the streets for years. Just like some of these people in New York. I'm going to tell you something. I came to New York 20, about 22 years ago. And some of the same people that I saw on the street begging 22 years ago, I go down on Fifth Avenue and I see them there still begging. They got a lot of money. But you see, they've got a beggar's consciousness and they can't even enjoy the money that they have. That's why I don't give them a damn thing. If a man comes to me and says, Reverend Mike, I'm on level with you. I want a dollar to get me a pint of wine. I'd probably give him something first. <laughs> He's honest. And if I don't feel like giving it to him, I'd say to him, well, look, son. I says, you know, <laughs> I says, if I can't afford to support a, a habit like that, I sure can't support yours. <laughs> So many times people who have been beggars and who lived in poverty die and they find hundreds of thousands of dollars in their hovels when they die. Well, you see, the truth is they didn't have their money. Their money had them. And there's a difference there. That's why everything that I have, I make it my business to enjoy it. And damn it, everything you get your hands on, you enjoy it. Right after I first got married, I, uh, <clears throat> that's when I sent for the insurance man to come and, and so that the church could take out an insurance on me for the benefit of my wife. <clears throat> and uh, so after they finally made the investigation and saw the angels at my house and all like that, my wife started kidding me. She says, oh, says, when you pass, when you die, that me and my next husband are going to live it up. <laughs> I got to thinking about that and I said, you call that insurance man. <laughs> call him right back here. <laughs> I took out one on air. I says, aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> said, you can mess around if you want to and go before I do. But me and my next whatever are going to really live it up. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm not telling you to be reckless with your money that's not what I mean but everything that comes your way by means of your God consciousness you should enjoy it and savor it because whatever you enjoy you increase write that down whatever you enjoy correctly you increase and I've told you and warned you before, never put anything away for a rainy day. Because if you do, it's going to rain children. And don't think you're going to take anything from anybody by enjoying, by succeeding, and by prospering. Well, the few things that I have, if you want to call them that. If I didn't have them and enjoy them, the poor people wouldn't have them. Success is divinely natural. Prosperity is divinely natural. I love the scripture from Joshua. You shall have good success. Together, you shall have good success. What kind of success? Good success. Everybody should be a big success. I was so happy to read yesterday that in... Uh, 1972, 
about 25,000 more Americans became millionaires. More people are becoming millionaires today than ever. Don't you believe this old bunk about devaluation? People come to me talking about the devaluation of the dollar. I said, I sure rather have a few million of these devalued dollars today than nothing of those valued dollars of yesterday. And I have to repeat here again something about Harry Truman when he first ran for president on his own. And some, one of his opponents said, yes, in 1932 you could buy so much for a quarter. And Harry Truman said, yes, but in 1932 who had a quarter? <laughs> but just stop and think for a moment. Just last year alone, 25,000 more people became millionaires. And it's easier today to be successful and prosperous than ever before. Why ordinary people are becoming successful and prosperous and becoming multi-millionaires. You see, because, you know, well, to go back a ways in American history, uh, the big multi-millionaires, you would say they made it in railroads and in shipping and in things of that kind. But here again, look at that man from, that old man from Kentucky who was drawing his social security, an old man, and, and he got a, a chicken and an idea. That's all he had, a chicken and an idea. Colonel Sanders. And he started frying chicken. And he is a multimillionaire, which goes to what I tell you from time to time that, you know, everything is idea. And, and some people seem to think that, well, because I didn't get a great education, because maybe I'm an ordinary person. Well, Colonel Saunders was a very ordinary man, drawing Social Security, the biggest franchise business in the nation today. Time magazine did about five, about ten pages on them a few weeks ago. Is McDonald's nothing but a damn hamburger. How much more simple can success be? That there, there's a man with a hamburger and an idea. Then he put cheese on it and made it a cheeseburger. And he kept adding. Now, what's the latest thing they've got? Big Mac. Nothing but a damn hamburger. But he kept getting, after he got that first hamburger idea, he kept putting ideas onto that idea. Are you with me? Yes. Anybody here taking me serious? Yes. See, some people are looking for some fantastic thing to come out of the sky. Some people are looking for some great wonder. <laughs> oh, no, success is many times a, a simple idea. Yes, and people have gotten rich off of great ideas, like the Wright brothers and and uh, aeronautical science and Thomas Edison and the electric light bulb. But just think today, people are getting rich off of hamburgers. Some of you women in here can outfry Colonel Sanders any day when it comes to chicken. Well, why ain't you rich? I myself can make hamburgers. <laughs> Absolutely. So if I stop preaching, I could set up a hamburger stand, and I guarantee you, brother, I'd give McDonald's a run for all their money. <laughs> Every once in a while, I make up some hamburgers, too. I've got my own recipe written down in my house. I give it to my housekeepers. I've made them myself to show them what I mean. You never tasted anything like it. <laughs> I know so many, if, if I stop doing this, I know so many simple ideas. Because you see, when you become a person of ideas, and, and as one of Reverend Ike's success ideas was titled, I open my mind to right ideas. When you get in the habit of opening your mind to right ideas and to success ideas, why successful ideas, money-making ideas just come to you in floods. 
which fulfill the words of Jesus to him that hath, to him it shall be given. C Colonel Saunders is going to get richer. No chicken will be safe. <laughs> they're always coming up with new ideas the rich get richer and the poor get poor that's the law of mind <laughs> and that's what wealth is anyway wealth is pure idea so is poverty, pure idea. <laughs> now I'm, I'm, I'm just nudging some of you.